Please take your seats. Good afternoon. I'm Laszlo Kontler, Pro-Rector for our Budapest campus at CU, uh, Professor in the History Department. And on behalf of Central European University, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you all on the occasion of the opening of our 2022-2023 academic year, the 32nd in the history of our institution. Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, our ceremony begins with the opening remarks by our President and Rector, Professor Shalini Branderia. Thank you. Dear members of the CEU community, it's my great pleasure to welcome nearly 700 new students, and the good news is probably that most of them are in class. Uh, so I think the timing may not be the right one, but it is still a warm welcome on a rather cold and rainy day. 700 new students, undergraduates and graduates to the CEU. May I request the incoming cohort of this year, 22-23, to please stand up so that we can identify you, applaud you. So on behalf of the CU Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and everyone who is gathered here today, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you, and we are thrilled you've made it in person to Vienna. I heard some stories about the kinds of bureaucratic hurdles some of you had to overcome, but the fact that you are here shows you've already passed the first test of resilience. It's wonderful that we are able to celebrate the beginning of the year with you, a normal academic routine which was interrupted due to the pandemic. The start of the new academic year fills me with hope after the pandemic forced us into almost two long years of isolation. I'm optimistic that this academic year will allow us to interact once again with you in person, in the hallways, in the classroom, in the library and the cafe, at conferences, at public lectures, as well as at the many extracurricular, co-curricular events, cultural events, and also parties that happen at CU. Much as we've looked forward to spending time with you at the university, I think your experience in Vienna and at the university should not be restricted to the campus. I would like to encourage you to explore as much of this beautiful city which has welcomed CU with open arms as you can. Do make sure to enjoy the lovely public parks. The weather will get better, I promise you. I've been living in the city for eight years now, nine years, and you will see very, very beautiful weather. The magnificent architecture in the city, the incredible range of museums, of concerts and dance performances, and theater, both English and German. But please also don't forget to spend enough time this week in particular at the campus, as we have several exciting public events. And immediately afterwards, we begin with our conference on academic freedom. And I'd like to greet um, our two guests, who I'm organizing the conference with, the head of the new institute, uh, Dr. Willem Kruhl. 
We also then have a 30th anniversary conference, and it's actually our 31st anniversary, but we are a little late because of the pandemic, later this week. And next week, we have a lecture by uh, Joseph Stiglitz, the uh, Nobel Prize laureate in um, economics, to name only a few of the exciting events in the next 10 days. So do make most of your time at the university. I'm sure these will be intellectually valuable years that allow you to acquire the knowledge and the skills that you need in your professional life and to acquire the values that you will need to make a real difference in the societies where you choose to live and work across the world. You will meet students from all over the world here. Our students come from more than 110 countries. You will have opportunities, I'm sure, to make new acquaintances and forge long, uh, um, lifelong ties of friendship. You've chosen to come to a special university, dare I say, a unique institution. We at the CEU stand for the values of open society, for academic freedom, self-reflective and critical thinking, we are dedicated to fostering socially and morally responsible intellectual inquiry. Our university is a model for affordable education of the highest standards with a strong commitment to inclusion and to diversity, as well as to building democratic societies that respect human dignity and human rights. I realize that for many of you, these are difficult times. I'm welcoming you to the university at a time when many of your home countries are suffering the terrible effects of wars and of violence, are torn apart by civil war, or defending themselves against external aggression, which continue to cast their long shadows on our small community. I'm thinking here as much of the violence perpetrated on Ukrainians as the recent aggression against Armenians, the killings by the junta in Myanmar, the extreme repression in Afghanistan, the unrest in Ethiopia, to name but a few countries from which you come. Moreover, as if that were not enough, the pandemic and the economic hardships resulting from it have compounded the suffering in many of your countries. May I also be very honest and say we will be facing a difficult winter together with rising inflation and spiraling energy prices. Amidst all of these crises, COVID seems to have slipped to the back of our minds, but unfortunately the virus is still very much with us. So we will need to continue to look after the health and safety of all members of our community, and I'd like to really reiterate and remind you of this. Our student, Ahmed Sentavi, imprisoned unjustly by the Egyptian authorities, is finally free after 18 months in <clears throat> confinement, but he's unable to leave the country to complete his studies with us. How I wish he could have spoken to you here on this occasion. That is what I had agreed with him. But I hope very much that he'll be able to travel and come sometime during the year. I recount all of these challenges not to send a message of gloom, but to emphasize that we live in uncertain times, times which will call for a great deal of empathy, compassion, and solidarity on our part. Let me congratulate you on being here at the CEU, the university you have chosen for your own studies. Your arrival here marks a new chapter in your life, a chapter which you are the principal author of. Of course, your families, friends, and hopefully your teachers too will continue to play a part in crafting it. But the years at university are a chance for each of you to determine the direction you choose to take in your personal and your professional life and how you choose to do so with responsibility. This may be a daunting prospect at times. It's also an exciting and an empowering one. In my view, the purpose of the university, and especially of this university, is not just to prepare you to be financially successful, though I hope that your education may well do that too. Serendipity is at the heart of your time at this university. It fosters creativity, allows you to think out of the box, 
and in these uncertain times, that is needed more than ever. I think we would have succeeded at the CEU if we can support you to find your, for yourselves, each one of you, the bigger purpose for your own lives. In these troubled times, we can only inspire you to become engaged scholars and citizens of the world. We will try to provide you with the analytical and conceptual tools to make sense of many of these challenges which are facing us today. All I would like to ask you is to remain open, open to new ideas, but also open to accept uncomfortable truths and embrace contradictions, willing to learn, to listen, and to tolerate differences of opinion in the classroom and outside it. For an open society means the acceptance of our fallibility and the openness to question orthodoxies and to even revise our pet opinions. So do make the most of all that the university has to offer to you in this respect. It's invigorating learning environment with an outstanding faculty, a highly supportive staff, and your peers from across the world. You've come to the right place if you're looking for intellectual excitement and an education that imparts enduring values. Welcome to the Central European University, and I hope you have an enjoyable time with us. Thank you very much, Shalini. We continue with a short musical interlude uh, to which I shall give you just a very short cultural historical introduction. Verbunkos is a Hungarian genre of music and dance originating in the 18th century, played and performed during recruitment, Verbung in German, in the army of the Habsburg emperors, who at the time were also kings of Hungary. It is marked by an alternating tempo, the more energetic parts, including high jumps and spur clicking. In order to enliven CU's student recruitment campaigns, we have been thinking of introducing Verbunkos in them, but this is yet to be implemented. The Roman musician Janusz Bihari, who lived from 1764 to 1827, remains one of the most well-known composers and interpreters of Verbunkos. He was a violinist who played in the court of Vienna during the entire Congress of Vienna in 1814. Zsuzsa Berényi, who has also moved from Budapest to Vienna recently, will perform for us a verbum course by Janusz Bihari and a Hungarian dance by Ferenc Farkas.
Thank you very much. And now, two CU students will address our gathering. First, a continuing student, and then by an incoming student. Abul Khair Yelan is a second year MA student in the philosophy department here at CU. He's a big connoisseur of metal music, hip hop, horror films, and raccoons. He received his BA from the Faculty of Liberal Arts, also known as Smolny College, at St. Petersburg State University, where he majored in philosophy and researched the ontologies of Gilles Deleuze and Martin Heidegger. Currently, he plans to work on issues related to Spinoza's metaphysics. Please welcome Abul Khair Yerlan. Abul Khair, please come forward. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I would like to speak uh, first and foremost to the students who are new to CU and are starting their studies here today. You're probably asking yourselves a lot of questions like, did I make the right choice? What is so special about CU? How could a loving God create the MA35 office? <laughs> to the latter, my answer is I truly don't know. As for the other questions, I might be a bad student for this, but I'm not exactly aware as to where CU is placing in which rankings and so on. But there is something I do know, though. If you are doing graduate school here at CEU, it already means that you are smart and promising in whatever it is you decided to do, and you are surrounded by equally impressive colleagues. I think that is generally the thing about doing a graduate degree in any decent university. Everyone here is smart. And the only way you could potentially stand out both as an institution and as a person, is by being kind. I'm happy to assure you that CEU is quite outstanding in that respect. It often feels much more like a community of friends or like-minded people than just a place where you come to do your work, which is why I and my friends are often hanging on campus even if we don't have anything to do in particular. By the way, if you're good at ping pong, I challenge you to a duel on the top floor sometime soon. Those of you who are familiar with me know that it took me some time to get here in the first place. After spending a few depressing months waiting for the MA35 officials to give me a green light, I was delayed a little bit more by a massive protest which turned into violent and deadly clashes in Almaty, Kazakhstan. It was probably in those days of all tranquility which I spent reading a hefty biography of Immanuel Kant to the sound of gunshots and grenade explosions coming from outside that I was first touched by the aforementioned kindness of the people of CEU. It came in the form of my friends urging the Dean of Students Office to try to contact and help me somehow, of my professors willing to bend the deadlines and other academic requirements until I am safe and ready to continue working. Of course, what I had to experience in January comes in no comparison to the living hell that our colleagues from Ukraine have to experience for more than 200 days now to what our Afghani and Palestinian friends are familiar with for their entire lives. I hope that the university keeps giving them all the possible support, and of course, Given that a university is for most part its students, I, being a philosopher myself, would like to quote a great collective of philosophers known as the Smiths, to whom belong the following words. It's so easy to laugh, it's so easy to hate, but it takes guts to be gentle and kind. Welcome to see you, have a great time, and have guts to be gentle and kind. Thank you. The Smiths seem to be connecting generations. Thank you very much, Abu Khair. Our next speaker is Sarah Hinteregger. Sarah is an incoming bachelor student looking to major in international relations as an aspiring diplomat. She loves to read and write and would love nothing more than some reading recommendations on good historical fiction. Sarah, welcome.
my history is full of forced relocations, much like CEU's history. Granted, the circumstances of CEU are very different from my own. CEU's steadfast commitment to the ideals of an open society and democratic values have led to its most recent relocation. I will take this opportunity to stress the fact that these values of an open society are what allows for people like me and you to turn multiculturalism into the basis for higher education. It is what allows us to study in a place with countless others who have experiences that will expand upon our own. It is not surprising that such a university has been expelled by an authoritarian-leaning government. I would like to thank the CEU faculty and leaders for refusing to compromise on these ideals and, instead, sharing them with a new country. These ideals allow for people with a fractured background like me to feel at home somewhere. I am an Austrian-Bosnian child of a diplomatic family that has lived in seven different countries and explored each culture. By the time I would be familiar and comfortable within one, it would be time to leave again. My young life is marked by the abandoning of one lifestyle and the adoption of the next. Every time I had to start over, I introduced a new break into my background. CEU is an institution which allows us to heal those breaks. It is a place where I can reconnect with people from each of the cultures that I have left behind. It is a place where any social event is bound to introduce me to people from backgrounds more complex than mine, where everybody's histories can combine into one cohesive understanding of the world. There is no place that I would rather be. Thank you to everybody that I have talked to and will get the opportunity to talk to over the course of my next four years at CEU. This period of my life will be characterized by an academic exploration of internationalism. In my interdisciplinary bachelor's program, I will be taught by a diverse group of professors and engaging in deba debates with an even more diverse group of students. The healed disruptions of my past will become the basis for a unique analytical perspective that will be challenged and improved by the students around me. I'm beyond excited to further my education at CEU and hope that we will all be able to help each other in this process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. It is now my pleasure to introduce Professor Khadija Tsinamur Carroll, representing the CU faculty. Professor Carroll is director of the research project Repatriates, artistic research in museums and communities in the process of repatriation from Europe. She is a member of the Department of History and an internationally renowned visual artist and experimental filmmaker, trailblazing the unification of theory and practice in the arts. Please welcome Professor Khadija Tsinamur Carroll. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, Kollegen und Kolleginnen, liebe Studierende. Ich habe die Ehre, Sie nach Wien ähm, willkommen zu heißen. Willkommen in einem Wien, in dem wir fast alle in der CEU von woanders sind und jetzt hier an einem Ort zusammenkommen, der gerade deshalb der perfekte Platz ist für eine Organisation wie wir. Ich habe an vielen Universitäten in verschiedenen Ländern gearbeitet, aber noch nie an einer der CEU, wo wir gemeinsam nicht als lokal und international definiert sind, sondern alle Teil einer Diaspora sind. Die Universität spiegelt das und das ist, was es so einladend macht. Es gibt keine Sprache oder Kultur, die hier primär angenommen wird. So where I was born in Australia, we call this tradition welcome to country. And the running joke in this country is that there are no kangaroos in Austria, which is not quite true. There are a few Austrian Australians like myself. So welcome to a city. I'm not translating the German. I kind of did that. But welcome to a city surrounded in mountains, in, in fragrant grasses, in vineyards, and welcome to Central Europe. Welcome to a periphery within. Welcome within a periphery to an open place where we all grow. Welcome to solidarity. Welcome to a cohort of togetherness. Welcome to living well. Welcome to finding out you don't know and welcome to all the things that you can never know. To a sense thereof in the excitement of new beginnings and the ripeness of conclusions. Welcome to a vision, a utopia, 
an incomplete, ever-expanding idea. A place that is not just a crusty old university, as most of them are, and welcome to my experience, and to all of your experiences, all here, all now. Welcome to this moment and to the profound experience of giving your life to study life itself, or giving your time, rather. We faculty are just your guides, your mentors, kindred spirits along the way. This is a place where the history of the place may weigh on you, and in the low light of winter, you will find yourself inside a process. And it is that process which we share. So for all of you that come from the South, like me, get ready. Being here gives us all time and space to be with our thoughts. CU welcomes you to a space for your own thinking and being. That is what each and every one of you need to welcome yourselves to. And remember, if you're enjoying the space of your own mind, then you will also savor the Vienna CEU that hosts you. And I can say, knowing Vienna my whole life, thank you for coming here, because you are the greatest gift to this city. Danke schön. Thank you very much, Khadija. Now we'll have some more music without an introduction on my side this time. Giuseppe Berini will now perform for us the Chacon in G minor, attributed to, Ma to Tommaso Antonio Vitali in an arrangement for solo violin. Enjoy.
In the next and last part of our ceremony, we will present two awards, the Presidential Scholar Awards and the European Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Social Sciences and Humanities. CU's Presidential Awards are supported by a generous donation to the university and its students from distinguished professor of history and former CU president and rector, Michael Ignatiev, and his wife, Zhuzhana Zhuhar. Their, gifts, their gift celebrates the excellence and leadership demonstrated by the recipients. The Presidential Awards Program was launched in 2020, together with our undergraduate studies programs, to support exchange between our graduate and undergraduate students. I would like to ask our Rector Emeritus, Michael Ignatieff, to confer this year's Presidential Scholar Awards. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, let me say just a word about these Presidential Scholar Awards. In 2019, I was honored with a prize in the State of Israel. It was a big prize for my work in human rights and for my work on academic freedom. And I, it was given to me, but I thought to myself, well, I can't really take credit for defending academic freedom. We were all in the trenches together, and so it seemed appropriate to give a portion of the prize, not all of it, but a portion of the prize, back to CU, and that's where the idea of the Presidential Scholar Awards uh, came from. Uh, it was actually my wife's idea, Susanna's idea, so that's why it's in our, in our joint names. Um, so it's an honor to present these Presidential Scholar Awards and uh, let me read out the names. Uh, for the undergraduate scholarships, the recipients are Cecilia Regner, who is in culture, politics, and society, and she comes from Austria, and she's here. Next one is for Adam Bader who's in philosophy, politics, and economics, and he's from a lot of places. He's from the United States and Hungary, both. <laughs> for the graduate awards for research, the recipients are at the master's level, Yevin Yashuk, uh, who's in history, and he's from Ukraine, and he's present. The other award is to Muge Oguz of Nationalism Studies, and she's from Turkey, and she's present. The doctoral award recipients are Oleksiy Rodjenko, who's uh, doing a doctorate in history. He's from the Ukraine, and for obvious reasons is not able to be with us today, but we want to applaud him, Oleksiy. <laughs> And uh, the final award is to Kati Karkina, who's doing a doctorate in legal studies, and she's from Latvia, and she's present. Congratulations to you all. And I would now like to ask our Pro-Rector for Research and Faculty, Agnes Batori, to confer this year's European Teaching Excellence Award. It is our tradition to present the European Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Social Sciences and Humanities at the opening of each academic year um, when we welcome our uh, incoming class. 
CEO launched the award in 2011 to recognize outstanding educators in the social sciences and humanities from the 48 countries that make up the European higher education area. The award is supported by a generous endowment gift from the Diener family in memory of Ilona Diener, and it is now known as the Diener Prize. The recipients of the award are selected by a prestigious international committee to reward innovative teaching methods, problem-oriented teaching, and sustained excellence in pedagogy. Previous recipients were drawn from universities in Austria, Ireland, the Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Great Britain, and Hungary. I would like now to announce and welcome this year's winner of the European Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Social Sciences and Humanities, Professor Linda Daniela. Daniela uh, Professor Daniela is Dean of the Faculty of Education, Psychology and Art and Chair of the Council for Doctoral Defenses in the Educational Sciences at the University of Latvia. She also serves as an expert in education at the Council of Sciences of the Republic of Latvia. Her expertise spans technology-enhanced learning, smart pedagogy, virtual education, digital learning materials, and educational robotics. Professor Daniela is author or co-author of more than 90 publications on all, dimension, on all dimensions of education and pedagogy. Professor Daniela, it is my great pleasure to hand over this year's award. colleagues, students. I'm happy to be here today and I feel proud and extremely honored to receive the Diener Award. I'm thankful to University of Latvia who nominated me for this award and I'm earnestly grateful for the recognition I have received for my work because I'm very sure that Every other nominee for this award was as capable, if not more, of winning this award. I feel proud to receive this award and I feel honored for every teacher who supports learning because without teachers, we wouldn't have doctors, we wouldn't have actors, we wouldn't have even hairdressers and all other professionals. To be a teacher means that there are always someone who listens to you and always someone who challenges you. To be a teacher means to be always smart and sometimes play dumb, we know that. To be a teacher means to believe in students even when they don't believe in themselves. To be a teacher means to teach honesty, courage, and dignity. To be a teacher means to think outside the box and predict unpredictable. I am proud to be a teacher, to be a teacher of teachers, and represent all teachers today. I sincerely thank each one for helping me reach a stage where I am now and I can proudly hold this award as a mark of my achievement. I also promise to only get better at my work. Thank you. And now we come to the conclusion of the opening ceremony for CU's 2022-23 uh, academic year. But I've been reminded to remind everyone of the conference on academic freedom that is just going to start uh, in a stone's throw from here. During the recent past, our work has been exposed to diverse afflictions uh, which have impacted our circumstances severely. Let us hope that we shall be spared of them as much as possible, but let us be prepared to cope with them. We wish you all a successful academic year.
Thank you very much for coming.